Hello, and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. We are so excited to be introducing our new stamp set, Big Thanks, in honor of Hero Arts' 45th anniversary. So let's go ahead and check it out. This set has these super cute rhinoceroses, and they're absolutely adorable, facing in two different directions, so you can do really cute scenes with them. And then we have three different styles of birds that you can put on their backs or on top of their heads, and it looks absolutely adorable. We have two different size clouds to help set the scene, a cute little butterfly for your skies. We have rocks in two different sizes and also grasses in two different sizes that are perfect for helping set the scene. We have these cute little flowers that you can put amongst the rocks and the grasses too. There are some awesome mix and match sentiments in this set. And right here we have these really great outlined versions of thank you, big thanks, and then now we've got the solid versions of thank you and big thanks. The cool thing is, is you can layer them or use them separately and I'll be showing you guys that in just a little bit. We also have some great phrases that go along with this. So we have a very big thank you or you can use the larger outline thank you. Sending thanks for all you do. So very much, thanks so very much from all of us for being my friend. You've always got my back, which is my favorite sentiment and thanks to you. We also have an exclamation point for the ends of the smaller phrases and for the outline and solids of the bigger phrases too. And of course, a cute little heart. Here are the different ways that you can use those larger scale sentiments. You can use the solid on its own, you can use the outline on its own, or you can layer them. So in this first one, we're gonna layer them directly on top of each other. And so that solid one is gonna be coloring in the letters. On this next one, we're going to offset it. So you'll see I shifted over to the right just a little bit, and that gives it this cool neon sign look. You can also stamp the solid on its own like we had earlier, or the outline on its own, and you can color them in with your markers, and it looks so cool with that gradient in there. Next, we're gonna use some Copic markers to add some color to these super cute images. And I really like using warm grays for these rhinos. And we're gonna be making these rhinos kind of a lighter gray, but they look really cool as a darker gray too. So you'll see that I'm working my way down the rhino. So I'm gonna work just on his back a little bit, blending from dark to medium to light, and then down his neck. He's a pretty big image with a lot of open area. And so I like kind of going from different areas like the bottom of his foot and the top of his back, and then kind of meeting in the middle. This gives me a really Really, really nice smooth look. My coloring of these rhinos was inspired by Elena on the Lawn Fawn design team and she took her darkest marker and added these teeny tiny little dots at the top of his head and at the top of his back and I thought it was the coolest detail that gave him just a lot of little extra texture. So we're going to be repeating the exact same style of coloring kind of starting in different sections and then meeting in the middle at his head starting in different sections around his body and meeting in the middle for a nice smooth look and then adding those teeny tiny dots for some really great texture. As we keep coloring, I thought it would be fun to let you guys know a little bit more about this stamp set. So this set is called Big Thanks, and it's a partner set with Hero Arts, and we've done it in honor of their 45th anniversary. How amazing is that? 45 years of beautiful, inspired stamping. We absolutely love everyone at Hero Arts, and we decided it would be fun to create a super cute stamp set with a thank you theme to show how grateful and thankful we are to Hero Arts for their amazing contributions to our creative community and even more so for their amazing friendship. The people at Hero Arts are the nicest people that you'll ever meet. They're so incredible. When we first started out, they helped us out with advice and I am forever grateful to them and thankful to them. And so I hope this cute set really is in the inspiration of how amazing Hero Arts is. So thank you, Hero, for everything that you do for our creative stamping industry. As we start to finish up coloring in those grasses, we're gonna start working on those outline letters. So they look really cool stamped in either black or different colors of ink, but they're really, really fun to color in. And even more fun is coloring them in rainbow order. So we've got some Roy G. Biv going on here, and I absolutely love it. I just put my darker marker towards the bottom and the lighter one towards the top, and it's the coolest look, and I love coloring them this way. 
Here is a look at all of the images from the set all cut out and you can see just how adorable they are. And now we're going to mix and match some of these images. So you can have the birds in the scenes or you can have them on the tops of their heads or on the tops of their backs, which is just so cute and goes along with the thanks for always having my back. You can have your clouds in the sky and the butterfly and then take your rocks and grasses and move them all around and creating scenes with these is just the most fun thing. So now it's time to create some cards with this set and we're gonna start off with a really cool sunset sky. So we're gonna be die cutting with a stitched rectangle, some craft cardstock and some white cardstock. We'll then take a stitched hillside border die and we're gonna die cut a cool little hill out of that craft cardstock, which is going to be the sand that our rhinoceroses are standing on. Now I wanted to kind of see what placement I wanted to put this hill because we're going to be putting those thank you words below. So we're going to just use the stamp as a little guide as to where it should be. And then we're going to use some low tack tape. I'm going to use some post-it note tape here to hold that hill in place. The next thing we need to do is create a mask for our sun since we're creating a sunset scene. So right here, this is a full stick post-it. These things are awesome. And we're gonna die cut that with a circle die and that's gonna be our setting sun. So here I'm gonna use my grid mat to help me line up this circle. We'll put it right in the center, tucked behind that ground and then press it down really well so that it's ready to become the mask for our scene. We're going to remove our hill for now and now we can start doing some ink blending. So we're going to be using a blender brush and different colors of inks in yellows out to oranges with a hot pink for the outside edges. So we're going to be starting in the center of that sun and working our way out with our lightest yellows. And then we're going to start on the outside of the card working our way in with our different oranges. So kind of our yellowy orange, darker orange, and then we'll be bringing in that hot pink. That's what really helps set this sunset apart. Now to make sure we have a nice blend for all of these colors, we're gonna keep going back through them. So from the yellow to the lighter orange to the dark orange and back and forth between where those colors meet to create a really, really cool seamless blend. And now we're at my favorite part and that's removing the mask every time I do it. It's the coolest thing, like how awesome does that look? Now that sun's pretty white, so we're gonna add a little bit of our lighter yellow colors over that sun. That's also gonna give it a nice blend into the sunset scene we created too. So we're just gonna layer a mix of the lighter and the darker yellow until it looks really nice in the sky. Next, we're gonna add some texture with water and some white paint. So we're gonna pick up some water with a small paintbrush and tap the paintbrush to create splatters. This is gonna react with the ink and just give it a little bit of texture in the sky. It's also gonna kind of take the eye away from any imperfections in my blending, which is good too. And then here I've got some of this Copic white, but any white acrylic paint would do. I'm gonna add it to my mat and mix it with just a little bit of water, pick it up with the paintbrush and tap that around the sky too. And those little tiny white splatters just add the perfect texture to this sunset and it just makes it look finished. And today we are recreating a card by Elena. So thank you so much, Elena. So I've gone ahead and die cut another stitched white rectangle to do our stamping on. And we're gonna be building one of these phrases, mixing the larger words with the smaller words, which I think is such a cool look. So we have a very big thank you to you. And I love that the thank you is big because it goes along with the whole cute pun of the whole thing. So we're gonna line that up and our Misty will pick up those stamps and then we can add them with some black ink onto this stitched rectangle. Next, I wanted to fill in those outlined letters with a light brown ink that's gonna go along with that light brown hill that we cut earlier. So we're just gonna line that right up and it's gonna be a little bit offset, which is gonna give it that really cool kind of neon sign look. You'll see there at the top, I tried one where it was completely filled in and one where it was offset. I ended up really liking the offset one. I thought it looked nice with the sunset. So that's the one we're gonna go ahead and use. So right now we're using those words as a guide as to where to put the hill. Once we have that hill in perfect place, I'm just going to make a little pencil line and we can trim off any of the excess of our sunset scene. Then we can start to work on putting these together. So we can layer our sunset on there and then we can layer our hill on top of that. Then we can take that entire scene and add it to a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. Now we can start adding the rhinos into the scene. So we've added those on with some foam squares and then we're gonna take the cute little bird and add it on his back, which is just so super cute. We're gonna take some rocks and grasses and kind of help set the scene and also put some clouds in the sky. We're gonna add that cute little heart in the center and then we can add a cloud and one of the birds flying down, he's gonna fly and land on that other rhino and it's just so cute. I am in love with this scene. 
One of my favorite things that Elena did in her card is that she added a shadow. So here I'm taking a really light brown marker and just adding a shadow underneath the rhinos. And how cool is that? It adds so much to the scene. It was really easy to do, can be really imperfect. Just kind of add a bunch of little scribbles right underneath each of your stamped images. And how cool is this? I love the sunset sky. I love these cute little rhinos, the little tiny dot details on them and the shadows. Oh my goodness, just adorable. Next, I thought it would be super fun to create an interactive card with these awesome little rhinos. So we're gonna be making a flippin' awesome card. So we're gonna take the main piece, the larger panel piece, a scalloped square piece, and also that stitched rectangle there. And we're gonna be die cutting a bunch of cardstock. So we're gonna die cut some white cardstock for the main flippin' awesome piece. And then we're going to be die cutting some greens and also turquoises for our skies and grass for these guys to be hanging out in. That white scallop piece is gonna be a part of our sentiment eventually. Now here we have a grassy border die and we're gonna be lining that up on our green panel pieces. And so we'll be able to get four grasses, so two out of each one by cutting the top and the bottom of each square. To give this cardstock just a little extra dimension, we're gonna be taking a coordinating ink and using a blender brush and just adding a little bit of ink around the edges. So it's gonna give the sky almost like an ink blended look without having to ink blend an entire piece. I love doing this with colored cardstock. I usually pick an ink color that's a little bit lighter than the cardstock and that gives it just that perfect little dark edge. So we're gonna do that on the grass and the sky pieces. Now we'll start to create our scenes by layering the grasses on the panel pieces. Now you're gonna notice that I had one of those panel pieces that's kind of a landscape, that larger stitched rectangle. We're actually gonna be making a portrait card, so I'm gonna be switching that in just a second. But first we need to start to work on our scene. So our first little scene is gonna have our rhino with his bird friend. And then we're gonna have our rhino kind of walking away, and he's gonna have his two little birds kind of looking out at him. Then we're gonna have the other rhino waiting for this guy that's walking towards him. Of course, he's gonna get a cute little bird in a cloud too. And then for our last scene, you're gonna see that in just a second. So we're gonna trim off any of the excess. And I really love doing this because it really looks like a scene with movement when you have parts of their little images cut off. Now there you're gonna see that whole landscape one that I made and right now is when I realized, wait, I wanted to make a portrait card. Oops, we're gonna start over again. So here we're gonna use that same stitched rectangle that's gonna be for the last part of the flippin' awesome and we're gonna cut that in the same way. So we're gonna cut a grass but just out of the bottom of it and then we're gonna add some inking to both our sky piece and our grass piece. For this scene, I wanted to do the you always have my back because it's my favorite sentiment from the whole set, but it was a bit long. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna trim that stamp in half so that we can stamp them stacked this time. And if we wanna stamp them straight long ways another time, we can just put them right back together like a little puzzle piece. So we're gonna be stamping that right onto the sky scene and now we can make that final scene. And the final scene is that our rhinos are all together and all the bird friends are together. So we've had the one walking, the one waiting, and now they're all together, just good friends. I just think it's just the cutest thing. I love thinking about my stamps. I kind of talk to my stamps. What are they gonna do? What scene are they gonna make? And so it was really fun to come up with a little script of what was gonna be happening in this interactive card. We're gonna be adding some clouds into the sky and of course our cute little birds. And then we can trim off any of the excess that's hanging over the edges. And I just love how this turned out. So now it's time to work on our flippin' awesome mechanism. So the die creates some score lines for you right in the center and there are four different score lines and we're gonna fold along each of those score lines and we're gonna fold them each in both directions. So we're gonna work our way down all four of them and then turn around and do them in the other direction. And the reason we're gonna do this is it makes it have a really, really nice flip action. Now it's time to attach our panels. And our last panel is the first one we're going to attach. And we're gonna be attaching this on completely flat. So you'll see there that in that entire square area, we've covered it with tape runner, and we're gonna attach our last panel on there. And this is the one that's gonna have that white scallop with the sentiment. We're gonna add that on in just a little bit. Then the next pieces of tape runner that we're gonna add are in between those score lines. So we're gonna have three different strips in between each of those score lines. And that's how we're gonna attach our three other panels. So these panels are only attached by that one strip. So now we're gonna take our third to last panel and attach that. Then we'll take our second panel and attach that. And then we'll add our first panel. And you can already see how these are gonna be flipping to tell our little scene. 
Now you'll notice how there are those two little tabs there. We need to add some adhesive to those and we're going to be using some nice strong quarter inch double sided tape and we're going to add that to both of the tabs. The reason we're using this nice strong tape is this is actually the only place where the Flip and Awesome attaches to the card base. So we want to make sure that tape is nice and strong. And to form our mechanism, we're going to take the piece there, flip it behind, and then hug our tabs around. And that's how it's going to be attaching down onto our card. Here we've die cut the Flip and Awesome add-on, which is this really pretty stitched scalloped rectangle. And we're going to be removing the liner paper on both of those tabs, exposing the adhesive. Once we've done that, we can take those tabs and hug them around and then attach it onto that rectangle. Now our mechanism has been created and when you pull on that tab, you can see the awesome flip action. Now to attach that last panel that has the rest of our scene in it, we're going to add some tape runner to the back and you'll see that in the flip and awesome, it almost makes like a little gap right there. We're going to take this piece and tuck it just slightly into that gap. And the reason we're going to do that is so that it has a nice smooth action and it can work really, really well. Now, every once in a while, if you add too many die cuts to the Flip and Awesome, the action on it isn't great. And in this case, I have added a whole lot of die cuts, but there's a really cool little fix for that. And so we're gonna take a piece of acetate and we're gonna die cut it with the Flip and Awesome die. And then we're gonna trim it off right at that first score line. So we'll just use our paper trimmer and just trim off any of that excess. Then to attach it on to the Flip and Awesome, we're going to add some nice strong tape to the very top and then very bottom of the Flip and Awesome. And we're going to be able to hide that tape. So we're going to be hiding the top tape in the little gap area and then hiding the bottom tape with a decorative pull tab element. So now we can go ahead and peel off the liner paper at the longer piece that's at the end of the Flip and Awesome acetate. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tuck it right into that gap of the Flip and Awesome. And you'll see as we start to add this over, you can barely even notice the acetate on there. And it's going to really help since we have so many die cuts. Now, if you just had one or two die cuts, you don't need to do this method. But if you want to add a ton of stuff like I did here, this is a great way to even make your flip action more awesome. So now that we have that in good placement, we can remove the liner paper at the tab end and attach that down permanently. Now it's finally time to decorate that last panel. And so we're going to take that scalloped rectangle and we're going to stamp the big things on there. And I love this outline one because we're going to be able to do a little coloring and we're going to do a full rainbow coloring, just like we did earlier, adding a little bit of dark marker at the bottom and then shading with our lighter marker up to the top. And I love how this looks. It's so cool. We'll add some tape runner to this piece and we're going to tuck it into the grass just like we've been doing with all of the rhinos. I really love the grass kind of coming up into that big thanks sentiment. I think it's really, really cute. And now you can see how the whole sentiment goes big thanks and it says you've always got my back. Now for our card base, we're going to be using some rainbow pattern paper because it goes along with those rainbow letters that we created earlier. And so we've cut a little custom size card base here at three and a half by five and a quarter to be kind of a smaller card base to really frame this awesome interactive element. We're going to add some foam squares to the back of that scalloped rectangle and then attach that onto our rainbow paper. And I love the pop of color that it gives. To help coordinate with that paper, we're going to take the little pull tab die and we're going to die cut that from the rainbow paper too. And we're going to do it in kind of the blues and greens area because it goes along with the blue and green theme of this whole card. We can add some tape runner and add that right onto the tab. It's going to cover up that adhesive that we added on earlier and it's a really nice little arrow that tells the recipient what to do. So now you have this cool mini card and then when you pull on that tab, you get this really, really fun flip book action that goes through the whole story of our card. So we have our rhino and now he's walking off and the birds are getting ready. He's waiting to meet his friend and now they're together to say thank you. I absolutely had a blast making this card. It was so much fun and it's so cute and I just absolutely love these little rhinos. Next up, we have some gorgeous cards by the design team. And first up, we have a beautiful card by Grace. I love how she heat embossed in white on that black cardstock and kind of stacked her sentiments around. It's the cutest thing, and I love those rhinos on the hills. Next, we have a gorgeous card by Audrey, and how amazing is that pink sky she created? I just love it. Here is the card by Elena that inspired us to make ours today. I am just so in love with those shadows and the sunset that she colored. 
This card by Elise is so super cute, and I love that she created another version. Those speech bubbles are just adorable. Here I love how Shari colored in these rhinos in completely non-traditional colors. They're so cute and happy. And Letitia was inspired to do the same. This is so much fun and I can't wait to try it. Here this scene by Nicole is just beautiful. How amazing is that no line coloring and that really, really cool sky she created. And here Megan used the reveal wheel to create a really cool interactive element. And when you spin the wheel, that cute little bird flies back and forth. And then here we have an amazing card by Tammy. I love that oval and amazing sunset that she created. So we can't wait to hear what you guys think about this set. And we can't wait to see what you create with it. And I just wanted to thank Hero Arts one more time. We absolutely love you guys. Thank you for all you do. I hope you guys have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.